The Magic Paintbrush, Chapter 5 Chen Wang stood in the middle of his living room, in the middle of Guilin Mountainside, in the middle of nowhere China, and frowned at a painting. It featured a hulking beast with a drum-like belly and gorilla-like arms. Giant horns protruded from a bullish head. Most traditional Chinese brush paintings emphasized grace and beauty, but this was a creature of nightmares, not romantic poetry. Chen despised it. He was 1,500 kilometers from home and still hadn't escaped the ugly thing. His mother had insisted it come. She'd shipped it ahead of him, along with the furniture, so that by the time he arrived it hung in a place of honor, waiting for him like a slap in the face. Of course, she didn't think of it that way, but Chen had hated this painting since he was a child. He remembered scrabbling in his mother's arms as she lifted him eye to eye with the monster, the Tao Tai, she called it. This is our family protector, she'd said proudly. One of our ancestors painted it hundreds of years ago. It's watched over us ever since. Chen did not want it watching over him. It made him uncomfortable, uneasy, seeping into his infant nightmares. Years later, he'd kicked a ball in the hallway and cheered when it knocked the painting down. His mother had come running, her face pale. Chen Chen, she cried. How could you be so reckless? If you don't take care of the painting, how will it take care of you? To her relief and Chen's disappointment, the painting escaped its tumbled unscathed, and now here it was. How was a painting supposed to take care of him? Chen made a face not unlike the monster's angry snarl. Guess we're both prisoners here now, Mr. Ugly. His gaze slid from the parchment, well protected behind glass, to the mountainside beyond the windows. The area around Guilin City certainly belonged in a brush painting. Picturesque mountains, gleaming water, alluring mist. Guilin had it all. Before Chen's banishment here, he boasted about his family's house in these gorgeous lands. His mother had gone through a great deal of trouble acquiring it. It's my ancestral home, she claimed. I want it back in the family. If you listen to her go on about it, Chen had descended from Chinese royalty, or near royalty, or royalty appointed important people. In any case, it made his mother very proud. In the family's more recent history, Chen's parents had made a great deal of money by way of shrewd business decisions and luxury car parts. And even more recently than that, Chen had graduated from university and been told in no uncertain terms that he would not be taking over any part of his family's business until he shaped up. Chen had little interest in business, and his interest in cars was limited to the joy of roaring around in something shiny that his friends couldn't afford. But he had a great deal of interest in spending his life the way he'd spent his childhood, lounging in the soft lap of wealth. His parents were not soft people. They were industrious and hard-working. To be honest, Chen thought they missed the point of having boatloads of money, which was to enjoy it. They, on the other hand, thought Chen enjoyed it too much. The tabloids agreed and eagerly published spreads of him partying in the colorful streets of Shanghai, Beijing, Macau, Hong Kong. Well, the list went on. For years, Chen's parents had to put up with it. Oh, sure, they'd nagged and threatened, but they hadn't actually done anything. Until a few weeks ago, when a particularly scandalous story surfaced in the news. Alcohol, raucous partying, and exotic zoo animals didn't mix. Who knew? That apparently had been the last straw, because they'd shipped him to Guilin and not even to the city, but to this house in the far outskirts. He had nothing to do but putter around the rooms. He spoke with no one but the woman who came to clean and cook, and he barely spoke with her. After the constant lights 
and bustle of Shanghai, the quiet suffocated him. Until the tabloids get distracted by the next story, his father had said. Until you shape up, his mother had sighed. Until he died of boredom, more like. But cut off from his parents' funds, he had no other option. He glanced at the painting again. Maybe he could find a way to accidentally destroy it. The trouble was the protective casing. Chen was pretty sure he could launch a missile at the thing and the painting would still be pristine. He tapped his knuckles experimentally on the glass and frowned when he felt warmth emanating from the scroll. He pressed his hand against it. Definitely warm. And what was this? Something pushing back at his fingertips? Something emerging? Chen snatched his hand away. Fear transformed his legs into jelly, but he couldn't stop staring. A gorilla-like arm thrust free, sliding through the glass as if it weren't there. Then came a powerful black shoulder. A horn. A second horn. A ferocious face with burning coal eyes. Bit by bit, the monster dragged itself into the world. It was a hundred times bigger than the original painting, towering over Chen, casting him in cold shadow. Its jaws worked silently, showcasing jagged teeth and pale gums. Chen dropped to his knees. He shook like a leaf. D don't he stuttered, holding out his hands. Terror limed his words to his throat. I, I... The monster roared. Spittle blasted Chen's face. Then, as obediently as a dog, it sat on its haunches, as if waiting for instructions. <laughs>